We talked a couple weeks ago about earnings, and the big news that day was your conversion to a corporation, which sounds a little wonky, and yet has been a really big deal for the stock, not just yours, but the rest of the industry. Why? Well, I, I think uh, in terms of ours, it makes good sense, because there are probably two to three times the number of people who could buy our stock who yeah. haven't been able to, because we've been using uh, K-1 statements. So by getting rid of those and converting to the normal 1099, if we can take advantage of that huge additional buying power, logic should say that if more people want to buy you, your stock will go up. And so what have people said to you in the aftermath? It's, as I said, it's been a couple of weeks. I mean, are you hearing from a different class of investors? Is your phone ringing from different people? Yes, it actually is. And people say, uh, thank goodness uh, you made that decision. Uh, we really want to own the stock. Can you come and see us? Uh, our stock's up 13 percent uh, in the last week and a half uh, since, since I actually saw you. So you have a certain magic. Uh, I should come on frequently. Anytime. Uh, and the other firms uh, have gone up uh, as right. well. Not the same amount, obviously. But I, I think it's uh, the market looking and saying if that worked for Blackstone, uh, then probably the it's other firms work, yeah. will follow. All right, so that's sort of the retail side of the business to, to some extent and some institutions. What about your limited partners, the pensions, the sovereign wealth funds, the endowments? You talk to them all the time. A lot of them are here in Los Angeles for this conference. What's their biggest concern right now? Well, I think the biggest concern are high prices, uh, and, and that's a valid uh, issue. Uh, but they High are, prices that you're going to have to pay for deals. Well, that everyone yeah. is paying as the result of markets uh, going up. Uh, and, and so that, that, that's a concern. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the alternative class, uh, private equity, real estate, uh, and, and you know, credit, uh, uh, has done so well. Uh, for these investors over very long periods of time that they continue uh, to increase uh, their allocations. And, and that's, that's certainly good news for us. Uh, but, but it's a time where you need a little more uh, caution uh, for investing uh, than, than when, when prices are lower. And so as you look across the suite of products that you're offering to investors, whether it's real estate, credit, hedge funds, private equity, is there one that seems to be drawing a disproportionate or a little bit more attention from the big institutions right now? I'm asking you to choose among your children, I know. Well, that's a tough one. Yeah. You know, we love all our children uh, and all the funds sell out. So the bottom line uh, is that we've had uh, huge demand, uh, partly uh, uh, because we've done uh, so well for investors in every one of the classes, and the investors themselves have more money, if you will. Yeah. Uh, when, when markets go up, the size of their funds are bigger. Uh, so I, I, I think they're uh, biasing things to experience managers in a higher price environment uh, to, to, to basically protect capital uh, and do the right thing. Uh, but also ride the cycle and be able to put money in at the right time. So when you think about that appetite for all of these funds, they're selling out. You've talked about getting to a trillion dollars in just a few years in assets under management. You're more than halfway there uh, at this point. How much do you worry about getting too big, that there's too much money that you have to put to work? Well, you always worry about things like that. And the nice thing is you can do something about it. This isn't mandated. Yeah. Uh, and you don't want money that you can't invest well. Uh, our business has gone from no assets to the largest in the world uh, in our asset class at $512 billion because we're careful, uh, because we're prudent, because we understand we're playing a long game. Uh, and if we do poorly, uh, the only people who uh, remember that is everyone who gave us money. Uh, and so we only want them to have a good ride. Uh, and, and so it, it's up to us uh, not to have too much money in any strategy. What we tend to do, Jason, uh, is, is expand not by making one fund gargantuan. Uh, we, we do it uh, by inventing other strategies or, or going into areas we haven't where we think the investments are very good. So we're looking at uh, growth buyouts mm -hmm. uh, 
now are, are growth investing uh, uh, in equity. Uh, we think that's going to be very good. We're, so in, you'll raise a separate fund for that this separate year? Separate fund for that. We're also uh, expanding in life sciences. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that that's a very interesting area with a very technical, uh, technically intensive uh, a group we, we purchased named Claris that does third stage trials, invests in that area and actually does the trials right. for large pharma. So, so what you do is you find something that, that isn't as correlated uh, that in, in, the, in the growth, growth uh, equity area, you know, it doesn't particularly use leverage uh, where you're buying mature uh, companies in, the, in, in the, the tech area compared to the early stage things. And so as you look around the world, one thing that's certainly on people's mind right now is Europe, uh, specifically Germany, specifically the, the banking sector there. What do you think is going to happen? You spent a lot of time in, in that part of the world. Deutsche Bank, friend of mine. Where, where does this movie end? Well, the movie for Germany is a pretty good movie. It's been a good movie uh, since the 1950s. Uh, and, and they grow slowly. They're, they're, they're the largest uh, country in Europe. Uh, the, the, the financial sector in Germany has always been um, uh, some, somewhat different than in other parts of the world. Uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, smaller regional banks, uh, and they've had not great luck uh, considering how good their economy is that their banking sector uh, hasn't, hasn't performed as well. And uh, right now... Uh, you know, Deutsche Bank has been in the spotlight for uh, the last few years mm -hmm. in terms of uh, performance, and it's tough to manage a bank when everybody's looking at it and everybody's you know, uh, uh, raising questions. Uh, uh, Germany needs a, a national champion. Every, every European country believes that they, they need a significant uh, uh, credit extender uh, uh, and so do, you, so do you think it's a public solution or a private sector solution that ultimately helps save Deutsche Bank? I, 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 I'm not a Deutsche Bank expert. <laughs> I, I, I wish I were. Uh, I, I so feel, you're not going in there. I, 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 we're not going in. It's yeah. hard to do due diligence right. on a bank. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so you are sitting on a panel today with C.H. Tung and Joe Tsai uh, looking ahead to the future. I would imagine, given your expertise, their expertise, the focus is going to be on China. What's your one big takeaway from China right now? You've invested there. You've done a lot of philanthropy there. What's the thing people are missing about China? Well, China has stimulated its economy like they said they would when the tariffs went in. Uh, I was there four weeks ago. Uh, the, the people at the central bank were telling me that worked very nicely. And, and now you're seeing the result of that. Uh, which has surprised uh, some commentators that, that China's economy uh, looks pretty solid now uh, in the sixes, uh, six percent growth. Uh, and, and I think that would have surprised some other people. It didn't particularly surprise me. They have the ability uh, in China uh, to, to really force money uh, into their system uh, to, to, to create growth. And, and they're, they're doing it, and it's been successful. And are you putting more money uh, into China at this point as Blackstone? Or are you investing more heavily, and where? Well, we, we just bought a company there. Um, I think I think China is a harder place to invest uh, for outsiders. Yeah. Uh, and you, you you always have to be uh, prudent and thoughtful when you invest. Uh, we're looking uh, in the real estate area as well, uh, and. It all depends, you know, what happens and what values are. Right. Uh, Tim Geithner over the weekend was talking about the strength of the economy and this bull market that we've been in for a long time. And he said the only thing we have to avoid is dumb mistakes, of course. Uh, what could be a dumb mistake that we collectively could make, either from a policy decision or from a market decision? Well, uh, I, I, I think there are a lot of mistakes you can always make. I think if... If there's a really dramatic uh, change in the uh, tax area, uh, if, the, if the Democrats win, for example, if, if a lot of the things that some of their candidates are talking about, I think that would be sort of a uh, disincentive 
it could have a certain psychological shock value, uh, and, and logic would say that would, would slow an economy. Um, that's one of the things you could do. The other thing is that the Fed uh, could um, I- increase uh, interest rates. Uh, I, I haven't seen uh, for at least a decade uh, a Fed that, that is an unresponsive uh, to the real world, uh, and maybe even earlier. And, and people worry so much uh, about the Fed doing the wrong thing. And, and even if you start making uh, you know, a mistake uh, and, and correct it almost right away, uh, which is what happened uh, uh, as a result of the October 3 uh, uh, response, yeah. uh, that the, the Fed is the guardian of the system. They're not the enemy uh, of the system. And if we have a lot of wage inflation or something else, uh, which seems somewhat unlikely, but but and, and, and they start increasing interest rates, most probably it's because it's a smart thing to do. And, and you know, it's only when they get out of uh, uh, a cycle uh, where, where they think something's happening that isn't and then prosecute it all the way. I, I tend not to think the people there um, are in the business of making mistakes.